Ten seconds. Hey, James, how are you, buddy? The Topeka City Council meeting will come to order. If you would please rise and give your attention to Councilwoman Ortiz for the invocation. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to ask everyone to join me in the Lord's Prayer this evening and then follow the ple Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now, forever, and ever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are neither proclamations nor presentations this evening, so we will proceed with the roll call. Mayor Wilgas? Here. Council members Hiller? Here. Clear? Here. Ortiz? Here. Shum? Here. De La Isla? Present. Jensen? Present. Schwartz? Here. Cohen? And Harmon? Here. Received a message from um, Councilman Cohen that he has a family obligation that he, they agreed to prior to the election, so he will not be here this evening. Uh, proceeding then, uh, council members, there are no additions or deletions to the agenda and that uh, there is no executive session. We will proceed with the consent agenda. A, our minutes of the regular meeting of July 7, 2015, and there are no applications. That you've heard the consent agenda. Councilman Harmon. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd make a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as read. Uh, Councilman Harmon uh, moves to approve. Councilwoman DeLise the seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Opposed vote no. I vote yes. We have nine yes. Nine having voted yes, the consent agenda is approved. We proceed with the action items A, uh, the social services contract. A is approval of the 2016 social services and contracted services allocations in the amount of $633,000 $633,178. Thank you. I call on the uh, chair, committee chair, Councilwoman Hiller, uh, for the report and the recommendation. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Everyone should have received the report that looked like this in their, in their agenda packet in the agenda online. And then there was a packet in that uh, online that, that had a recommendation for a total of um, $770,000 for all of the, the three sets of social services, the contract services, the emergency aid services, and the preventive and counseling services. Um, you got today in, in, in email and then in front of you an update to that packet because in the intervening time after the ECD committee made its recommendations, one agency decided to terminate a program and advised us that they would not be taking their grant and that was for a total of $19,670. Uh, the details of all that decision making and allocations process are included in that council packet um, and the updates. Staff recommended to the ECD committee that the council accept the, that we set it up that the council accept the Economic and Community Development Committee's recommendation reducing it by the 19,670 in the declined grant. Um, staff checked, because there wasn't time for the ECD committee to meet, uh, council staff checked with Councilman Jensen and Councilman Shum, and my understanding is that that, that solution was acceptable to them. Gentlemen, by a nod, is that correct? Um, with that then, if that's okay, what I would do then is move to, um, to, to accept the committee's report and approve the 2016, a 2016 social services allocation 
of $750,000, 750 $331,331, which includes $299,999 for contracted services and a total of $450,332 for the emergency aid and other social services. Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Hiller has, has moved uh, the approval and the uh, actually a motion to make effective the recommendations uh, from the committee. Is there a second? Um, Councilman Jensen seconds. Now we're open for discussion, comments, further explanation. Councilman Harmon. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just for clarification, we received a memorandum from Sasha Stiles regarding some adjustments. So d does your motion include the adjustments described in the memorandum? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Councilman Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Karen, you said somebody wanted to back out. Who was that? Kansas Legal Services has uh, decided to terminate their em employment program. It, you'll find it on one of those both of those attachment lists. For seven thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars. Mm. Uh, no, it, it's nineteen thousand six hundred seventy dollars. It is. Yes. If you look at the packet that was on your okay, place today, so it's works. actually got a line through it, so it's easier to find it. So that money wasn't allocated then. It had been allocated originally, and that's why the motion, as I presented it, deletes that. So what happened grant. to that money? What did you do with well, that? Well, it, we would not allocate it, and therefore it would return to the general fund and be available for other purposes. Was there anybody that didn't get funded? There were. Can we talk about that and why? If you like, my, um, you had the attachments to that explained um, both the overall allocations with points and then the spreads on the allocations. Um, my preference would be not to go through individual agencies and their scores just out of respect for the agencies. No, that's fine. Okay. But they're there and it, it shows then the, the narrative explains the, um, the narrative that looks like this goes into detail on how the point of the scoring system was set up and how the decisions were made with each of the sets of grants. Thank and you, Ms. You, yeah, and you used a you used a point system that the council has approved in determining Correct. Uh, where the agency programs are reviewed and um, on this basis then the uh, recommendations are made to increase at various levels or to um, no increase and, and even to uh, cease funding. Correct. The committee started with the dollars and the distribution of funds and priorities that the council approved in February. Then set up a point scoring system that the, or actually the point scoring system was also in what the council approved in February. The staff set up a team of four who reviewed and scored all of the grants and spent a fair amount of time reviewing those and deliberating. The committee then met three times, three, four, and, and reviewed those and asked questions and, and, and then ultimately supported the staff allocations. We did even go through an appeal process for some of the agencies and um, reviewed and discussed those, those uh, concerns that they had and sustained the staff's uh, point scoring in all cases. I just think it's kind of sad that we have to put that money back when there's so many agencies that could use it. And did we, um, like, um, and, I, and I, I know that could happen. I, I just think it's kind of sad when there's a lot of agencies that could use it. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll a second, um, Councilman DeLisla. I'm, I'm going to, we'll get back to that, but I, she had her hand up earlier and I want sure. to recognize her comment. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm excited to see how this spreadsheet and the process is working. It really has helped, although it's extremely painful sometimes to not be able to fund some of the organizations. I think that for the last three years, when I first was in this committee, we were talking about how there were going to be very difficult changes occurring that we really wanted to be able to rely on a system that was extremely um, 
it was not based on 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 emotion it was not based on um it it really was based on the scoring and there has been such a significant emphasis placed on outcome measurement when when you look at these numbers even though the the formulas are not out here there is a significant emphasis. I think that 30 points out of 100 points are based on how the grant performed the year prior. Mm -hmm. and, and as a city that is looking towards having accountability and transparency, this is so important because it also says that not only are we being transparent, like with our CAFR, with, with the public, but we're also being trans we're asking the same type of reports from the organizations that are receiving funding from the city. And, and, and I just want to congratulate the committee for continuing on this process. I know that it's extremely difficult because I think that everybody here can agree that we love all of our social service organizations in the community. All of them. All of them provide a significant service. However, this process has been, I think it's year three in the making, and um, I think it's wonderful what is being done. Difficult. It's a very difficult job to have to say no to an organization, but it's a great job. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor, do you want to respond to uh, Councilwoman Ortiz's uh, question, comment? Um, we didn't get a chance to meet and discuss this last round, but when we were in budget, if you recall what we did in the budget process was say if we want to add something, we'll add it. If we want to delete something, we'll just delete it. And then the city manager would sort of match up those dots. Um, I would point out that you, one of the suggestions you made toward the end of the budget process that was adopted was to add $50,000 for employment services for young people, and certainly those dollars, whether it's those dollars themselves or other dollars, will be available to, to um, cover that new service that we've not had before. So there was some comfort in that. Councilor oh, Ortiz, go ahead. Well, and I think, I get think what one of the things I, I do like the scoring system. One of the things that bothers me though is that, um, and it always has, is that if there's something new that wants to start up, it doesn't leave room for that, well, you know. And and so that 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 kind of bothered me. But I, I I'm just looking at that amount of money, and and I I know that there's some other youth or elderly that could use it. You that's might, that's the only thing. Th those are very good points. Something to keep in mind is the way this process was set up, and it has been working along those lines, is that, is that the allocations process happens in the summer, and it's in and of itself, the spring and summer. And then in the, in the fall, in the midwinter, separate from that, that same committee sits down and looks at the dollars available and what they're for, and, and, um, and can make recommendations for making changes, adding dollars, changing the priorities, and so on. So we've worked pretty hard to push that into that committee and then bring it back to the full council so that well before the application process, everybody knows what the plan was. And the idea, too, was to allow for new agencies, and we have had new agencies each year. So, and they've been funded, new applicants, and some have been funded. So it's in there. Councilman. Councilwoman Claire. I don't know if I'm going to say this anymore. Um, because I understand what you said about the 50000 for the youth program, but prior to you saying that, I wondered if we could not take this and divide it up between all the ones that were funded. Okay. We actually did that with the emergency aid money because there was a fairly significant size grant that did not get funded. And so if you read all the detail, Otherwise, it didn't work very well to do it. Um, so we, we did, if you read all the detail, we did some shifting to optimize the amount of dollars that went per that formula to the agencies that applied. Um, really, really worked with the parameters that the council had given us as, as much as we could. And so you'll, if, you, if you haven't had a chance to read that detail, I encourage you to do it, you'll get dizzy. But the, the committee worked really hard on on staying within those guidelines and optimizing the money council if there's no others right now we have a a person signed to speak on this item in public comment lynn davis thank you Hello. madam deputy mayor members of the 
Topeka City Council. Good evening. My name is Lynn Davis, and I have been Executive Director at Breakthrough House since the beginning of February. The staff and consumers of Breakthrough House are very appreciative for the financial support that the city has provided throughout the years for our three programs, the clubhouse, residential services, and the payee department. This funding has made it possible for Breakthrough House to provide support to those members of our community with severe and persistent mental illness. We are on track this year to reach a total of 400 different individuals between, between our three programs. The Clubhouse is our flagship program, and we currently have 109 active members. Of course, a lot of you know, we provide activities there and meals during the day at lunch, and some people don't eat other than that. Some people, some members, that's their only meal during the day. Our residential services program dates back to 1987. We have two supported living group homes and we have some individual apartments. And in our group homes, we serve meals and we lessen the anxiety for our residents. And there's always 24 seven support via telephone, even in the individual apartments. Um, and it's only a call, just a phone call away. Our representative payee program currently serves 128 individuals and demand for this service continues to grow. We make sure that our payee consumers have their rents and utilities paid every month and this helps to prevent their homelessness and in addition because of that, this also helps to lessen the homeless population in Topeka. I repeat that right now we've got 128 and we could probably go up to 175 with the resources. In each of these programs, we've regularly posted outcomes of between 92 and 95% of Breakthrough House consumers being able to stay out of jail and mental health clinics. None of the Breakthrough House services are clinical or medical, but people with mental illness still need so much more than clinical or medical help. The Breakthrough House programs try to fill in the spaces where the clinicians and the mental health technicians leave off. So being non-clinical and non-medical, we cannot bill for anything. We cannot bill Medicare, we cannot bill Medicaid. But at the same time, this affords us the ability to be more flexible in supporting our consumers. We don't have to justify everything. You have one more minute. One more minute is all I need. We don't have to be, we don't have to justify anything to the insurance companies. So we've been known to go beyond the norm to deliver medication that's dropped off by mistake to go get bus tickets for one of our consumers who has a dying relative out of town, he needs to go out of town, or just to sit during lunch and listen to somebody who just needs to, somebody to listen to. So this is Breakthrough House, three programs, helping those who truly need a helping hand occasionally, now, later, once in a while, and sometimes all the time. So we've weathered some ups and downs in our 38 plus years. We're not going any, anywhere. We're committed to supporting Topekans with mental health issues. And we'll be back next year for the 2017 grant process. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you. Thank you, Lynn, for your comments. Is there other discussion? We have a motion. Uh, before us. If not, all those in favor of uh, approving the social service and contracted services grant allocations, please vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. I vote yes. I think someone has voted. We have eight yes, Mr. Shambadi, no. Eight having voted yes, the um, allocations are approved. We proceed with item 5B, the transit guest tax funds allocations, and I call on the, uh, the chair, uh, Councilwoman Schwartz, for the report. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, attached with the agenda was the uh, um, briefing of what the transient guest tax money and the committee met and decided to do with this uh, 
tax that comes in from lodging. Um, everyone who has a hotel stay in Topeka pays a 7% tax on their stay. And this accumulates and we have $2,740,721 that uh, we need to allocate for the next year. This um, amount that we decided upon was the visit Topeka would receive $1,514,117. Visit Topeka bid fund would receive $213,389. Sunflower Soccer would receive 303890 and the admin fee um, and other, um, this would be like grants for uh, administration, would be 46067 And then we would have a, a transfer from the, to the general fund uh, of 191945 for the zoo. And then we extended the 1% that was to end and we are holding that $383,890 until uh, we're having a meeting uh, next Monday to determine how that will be spent. Um, so with that and the contingency, the totals are $2,740,721. So I would move adoption of the committee report approval accepting. Um, we don't need every uh, we don't need to approve the committee report it is accepted but it would be appropriate for you to move approval of these allocations as presented okay, so and moved. then we will and then we'll open for discussion okay, so moved. mr. Harmon seconds all right we have before us the allocations uh, for the transit guest tax funds as uh, presented by um, uh, councilwoman Schwartz questions discussion uh, councilwoman clear so the 383,000 that's going to be determined when will that happen and what's it between and how does it work our meeting is july 20th at nine o'clock in the morning and so we will be determining what that one percent would be spent on do you have um we already had pre presentations okay. from the groups that are interested in um, tourism that came before the committee already so and then the city manager is putting together a proposal that we will be looking at. So where's the riverfront come, riverfront park? How does it fit into? Um, their funding was to end the, the, the end, I think it was the end of this year. Right. And so we have that will be in discussion, but we do know that there is another fund there that has been um, reserved for riverfront park. So we will be discussing that I also. I heard that. Okay. Thank yeah, and, and just and to clarify that this one cent of our transit guest tax uh, fund uh, terminates the end of this year, and those three entities that show zero are the the three that have been the three recipients of that. So they're going to discuss. Of course, first we we have in by this fall we have to approve continuing that one cent, and then assuming we do, where it will be used. Is that correct? Helpful. Okay, um, Councilwoman Hiller. So just to clarify that, uh, the the committee uh, would be considering what it would recommend, but mm -hmm. I, I think Councilwoman Schwartz said would be making the decision. But that would just be deciding what you'd recommend. What to the recommend. council has yes. to vote. Yes. Thank you. We we have a, we have a say, don't we? And yes. Do, 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 we're we're going to get to vote on this, aren't we? Well, there's okay. things that are delegated. Okay. So. All right. Yes. Sure. Other discussion. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion, second before us. All those in favor of the um, transit guest tax allocations as presented, uh, please vote yes. Opposed, vote no. I vote yes. We have nine yes. Nine having voted yes, the allocations are approved. We go to item <clears throat> 5C, an ordinance on a district closure. C is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Jim Colson terminating the Eastgate Redevelopment Project Plan, the Eastgate Redevelopment District redevelopment agreement terminating tax increment financing TIF for the district and distributing the remaining TIF funds to the county <coughs> disbursement to the participating taxing entities pursuant to law. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to ask Mr. Gerber uh, to uh, provide an overview on this item. I think Mr. Kaufman is available possibly to answer some questions too, or am I just bringing in Brent? I, I certainly can. It's a tag team. I'm, uh, I'm going to ask that Mr. Kaufman step forward and right. make this presentation. The <laughs> <laughs> name is right here. Good 
mayor and members of the council. So tonight, I'm going to talk about the Eastgate TIF. So, uh, a TIF district is a tax increment di finance district. It's a economic development tool that's allowed by the state of Kansas, and it's basically used to promote um, and stimulate the economic welfare of what we term blighted areas in a community. Um, so how that works is there's a property tax increment that is generated and then that increment goes to pay for public improvements within that certain district. So in the case of the Eastgate TIF, uh, what you do is you establish a base year for the property and sales tax for that district. So for example, in this case, the base year was 2007 and the property taxes that were generated by that district in 2007 were approximately $3,400. So then you compare that to the valuations of the current year. So in 2014, that district would have generated $40,000 approximately in property taxes. So that difference of 36,000 is the increment that goes to pay for the public improvements in that district. So like I said, the, the governing body established this district in 2007. Um, the public improvements included for that district that were expected to be uh, completed were street water, curb and gutter, sidewalk, storm, uh, sewer and landscaping improvements. Um, the project plan that was approved uh, in 2008 with, it was a company called 15th Street Developments. That plan included approximately 15 million in public and private investments. Uh, there were 13 parcels of land, about 18, 19 acres of land total in the area. Um, it was expected to add about 39,000 square feet of commercial property. Um, to date, it has added about 11, a little over 11,000 square feet of commercial property with the uh, convenience store and then also the shops that are associated with that development there. Um, in addition to that, there, it was also expected to add 60 new multifamily housing units that were never built out. Um, so part of the time frame that you got to think back and realize that this development occurred right after the market crashed, so the development never really took off like it was expected to. Um, the developer never submitted any uh, reimbursement requests for the city. So what we've been doing is that money has been accumulating in the fund uh, since the TIF district started, along with some sales tax that's also been put in the fund. Um, no bonds were ever issued for the improvements. It was, uh, there were supposed to be bonds, but that never occurred. So we have no obligations outstanding. Um, at this time, J&J, uh, &J, which uh, that agreement was assigned to back in 2010. J&J um, &J has went bankrupt. The, the properties associated with the district went through the foreclosure process, which ended up in the hands of a local bank who has since sold off portions of that property. So at this time, we have uh, basically about 163000 in property tax revenue that is sitting in that fund. It's also commingled with a little bit of sales tax money too. Um, what we're recommending tonight is to close the district and to take the portion of the 163,000 and send it back to the county. And then the county would redistribute those funds based on the participating taxing entities uh, over those various years. So the sales tax that's sitting in the fund, we would recommend um, coming back to the general fund since that's where it was originated. Uh, and in the, in the ordinance, it has the amount of 205800 Is that the, the property tax and the sales tax? That is, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. Okay, so that's the, the amount in the fund that mm -hmm. we will be redistributing to the, to the taxing entities. Correct. Well, yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, I, I th an appropriate move to take, and I, I also want to acknowledge the fact of the building that was done there. I think and uh, went through some difficult times, but it did certainly it, it is bringing 
uh, a good development to that area of the city. And, uh, and I know from talking to them, the location right off the turnpike, it's the last gas station going east, mm -hmm. and uh, people are aware of that on the, on the, on the interstate. So it, it is an important addition uh, to our community. Although, uh, as we as we know, it certainly wasn't developed as as was planned, and we understand uh, how the conditions change. Are there questions uh, for Mr. Kaufman? Oh, I'm sorry, Kaufman Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is in my district, um, and it's at 15th and Adams. I don't want people to mistake this as e Eastgate, um, because there is an Eastgate in my um, district as well. But this is at 15th and Adams. And no, um, it just happened that um, uh, there's a couple of tragedies that happened, and it just didn't get developed, and the developer did go bankrupt. So, um, um, but. But what they've done has enhanced that area. It's just sad that we didn't get to go through with the plan. Um, I would uh, make a motion to adopt the ordinance, Mr. Mayor. Okay, it's been moved to approve the ordinance. Councilman Delisla seconds. Uh, further discussion? Okay. Councilman Harmon. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I've got a question for legal. Mary, the, uh, the ordinance, by if adopted, would terminate uh, the redevelopment agreement that uh, we had with 15th Street Investments, which was assigned to J and, and J Developments. So by this action, we are terminating that contract, or was the contract rejected by the bankruptcy trustee, or both? We are terminating the contract, and uh, 15th Street's investment has signed an agreement whereby they concur with the action that's being taken uh, by the council and agree to terminating the contract. Okay. And the, the bankruptcy court, I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question, did not adopt this. Okay, so this. They, they rejected it? Correct. Okay. So there's no legal ramifications, no liability by breach. Well, I guess we're not breaching the contract, but by terminating the contract, we're not opening ourselves up to liability. I, yes, I looked at that, and again, 15th Street Investments has essentially signed an agreement whereby they waive any okay. liability, and J&J &J is bankrupt and dissolved, so I don't fear any liability. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Do you have one? Okay. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, I think this was discussed when you did a briefing with us, but this sort of clears the deck with that original developer and, and the changes that have happened. But if in time someone would want to come in and complete that original plan or something comparable, it would still be possible to do something in that location again, correct? Councilman here, I mean, that's correct. The, there, you can see from the map that there's still vacant properties within that location. As far as the TIF district, if the, count, or if the governing body so chose tonight, this would actually end the, it would terminate the TIF district. So start over. Yeah, it would start over. You'd have to go through the process again to get something started. That's fine. Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Okay, we have a I'm sorry, Councilman Ortiz. It's too bad we can't take some of that money and put some sidewalks over there. <laughs> or fix the streets. We can't do that. Well we're gonna do that anyway. Right? I'm saying since the money's there. <laughs> All right. Again. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the um, ordinance on the TIF district closure, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. I vote yes. We have nine yes. Nine having voted yes, the ordinance is approved. <coughs> we'll proceed to announcements. And the um, city clerk, if you would read the uh, agenda review preview for next week. The July 21st agenda includes, on the consent agenda, we have a board appointment for the Topeka Public Building Commission, we have a resolution um, for a noise exception and a special event for the cruise in the Capitol Car Show. We have the uh, notice for the public hearing to establish the August 11th budget hearing date. We have an ordinance, expenditure ordinance, uh, May 30th through July 3. And then we have a public hearing and ordinance um, for housing and health care improvement refunding bonds. That's in the amount of 8.2 million. We also will have a discussion regarding council initiated items being added to the agenda. Okay, thank you. Um, City Manager, your uh, th announcements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this Friday at 11 o'clock, um, there's going to be a really cool announcement. It will be exciting, but it will be cool, too. 
and I can't share a whole lot more. I think some of you have been, have been briefed in terms of what might be going on, but if you're available to go to Topeka Harley-Davidson, they're going to announce a, a new development and a, uh, a, a very exciting uh, project that's coming forward that really will um, be recognized all around the world uh, as something very spectacular in Topeka. So 11 o'clock Friday, Topeka Harley-Davidson, and you don't have to ride your motorcycles, you can drive your cars. But you wear leather. You, you have to, yes, you have to wear leather. Um, and, and, and if I can, I, I'd like to uh, allow Mr. Gerber to just make a very brief announcement about uh, e-billing for the utilities division. Mr. Gerber. Mr. Manager, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, maybe not quite as exciting as this Friday's announcement, but we, uh, the utilities, are excited to announce that beginning August 1st, our customers will have the opportunity for e-billing. Um, very simply, uh, they'll be able to receive their utility bills via email and not have them mailed to them. Uh, you can already pay your bills online, but this will allow you to receive your bills online. I don't have to tell you the benefits of this, but certainly they would include a cost savings for the city. It's more environmentally friendly, and it's just a more efficient way for us to do business. So we're definitely Thank excited about right. that Thanks. beginning August 1st. That is an important announcement. Uh, I have two announcements. First is uh, tomorrow night is a JDO board of direct uh, board meeting uh, for all the um, all the members of the council, and secondly, I want to um, continue from our meeting last week and mention the National Horseshoe Pitching Association um, and really encourage people to go out and visit. Uh, a couple points: this is a, an international event. Uh, we have um, pitchers from uh, Norway and from Canada uh, to make it international. It's one of the largest uh, in a number of years. And I think the, the significant thing is uh, Visit Topeka estimates that the, those participants from out of town will spend two and a half million in our city. 2.5 million is being spent. It's 1,400 people and they're here for over a week. So if you imagine those, they're spending like seven, eight nights in a hotel and eating three meals a day, that is a major contribution to the economy of the city. And by the way, Visit Topeka contributed 25,000 of the bid fund. So, you know, we proved tonight bid funds for next year, it's over 200,000, but see that's almost like one eighth. But you can see the return on that, 25,000, two and a half million. Uh, then this Saturday, as you know, ESPN Sports Live is going to be there live uh, filming part of the pitching and uh, it'll be exciting. And of course, they like to have the seats filled behind where they're filming like they do on Sports Center uh, that you watch each usually <laughs> weekend. So if you can get out, certainly encourage you to do so. Turn to uh, Councilwoman Ortiz. Thank you. I did tell the mayor he need to work on his horseshoes skills there. <laughs> That's okay, Mr. Mayor. You looked good on TV, though. Um, Justin Searcy left, but I wanted to tell him farewell. He's leaving WIBW. This is his last week, and he's venturing on to a, a new location, and I just wanted to wish him well. He's been a great reporter, and he's done a great job. Very friendly. Doesn't force you to say something you don't want to. Um, but anyway, I wanted to s send that shout to him. This is the 82nd annual Fiesta Medicana, and it is in our Visit Topeka book if you open it to see what to do in July. And um, I think that's awesome that we have that. Good food, good fun, some dancing, and a lot of hot weather. So I hope everybody would come down um, from 4 to, <clears throat> 4 to 11, um, Monday through Friday, and then you could also take the bus if you don't want to drive, and it's at the Judicial Building. And last but not least, I wanted to congratulate my cousin, Elena Adami, who won the Fiesta Queen. Mm. Um, my aunt, great aunt, was um, um, one of the founders and also her grandmother, her other great grandmother on the other side. So it's kind of made it awesome that the two great grands of hers and now she's Fiesta Queen. So yeah. there's always something to do. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Shum. This past Thursday and Friday, I had the opportunity to attend the Kansas Community Leadership Enterprise Summit here in Topeka. Uh, the Center for Neighborhood Enterprise came in from Washington, D.C. to present community leaders with the state of affairs of Shawnee County and Riley County and Douglas County. It was a good opportunity. I appreciated the opportunity to work with Lizone Grays uh, Keith, with, I, with, and then Keith Tatum and also Becky Halloran and some good community leaders here in Topeka to 
look at ways that we can address poverty in ways that perhaps we haven't tried before. So I wanted to especially thank El Shaddai and Bishop Watson for hosting and giving us the opportunity to participate in that. Thank you. Councilman Dio Ispa. We'd just like to invite everybody who's interested. Um, there's going to be a prayer vigil for um, Lily Mae Costas Nichols. It's going to be at Avondale East, and it starts at 7 o'clock. So I would encourage everybody to just show our support for everything that's happening in this neighborhood. Thank you. Councilman Jensen. Uh, it's hot outside. I want to remind everyone to be wary of the heat. It will affect you sometimes before you even know it. Um, also, I'm on the committee that is working on producing the next TEDx Topeka. This is an incredibly exciting uh, event and opportunity for our community, and we are on the hunt for speakers. So if you have an interesting idea, a revolutionary idea, uh, or just plain like to get up in front of folks and present your opinion on something, we'd encourage you to go to TEDxTopeka.com and fill out our application. Thank you much. Thank you. Councilman Schwartz. Thank you, Your Honor. My husband is not here. He usually is, but he's home watching because the All-Star Game is tonight. But I have to apologize to everybody out in the audience because he's had, he said that there's been no picture but sound. So hopefully we will get the sound and the picture going in the next few months. He wanted me to say that the gem of Topeka were the KU fans and KU winning the world um, tournament that, that uh, they won yesterday um, and also the all-star with all, all the royals that we have on it. But the gem I chose for this week is last night we went to the Fiesta Mexicana and as we parked the car and got out right there by the building was a huge Reeser semi trailer and I saw Jeff Russell uh, during the, the evening and I mentioned to him that it was wonderful that they support the community the way they do. We do have some good corporate sponsors, but that was really awesome that we did that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was I'm glad to see that we're going to have the discussion of the whether council members can bring an ordinance to the council. And nine months ago, I brought up an idea that I asked the city manager uh, to research along with our chief of police that um, it was an ordinance that has passed in many cities. And nine months later, I'm still waiting for that ordinance to get on the agenda. Um, last week, I had some success with getting the, the council to um, help with a grant writer. And I'm asking the council this time that if I don't have to wait nine more months or whatever it is, that if it went through the, the process of going to committee. Um, that ordinance, plus another ordinance that I had recommended by Safe Streets, Christy Pankratz, had asked me to introduce something. So, I'm urging you to tell the city manager that I would like to have this on the agenda um, of our council meetings in the future before we make all these decisions. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Councilman Harmon. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to give a shout out of appreciation to the uh, two council committees who brought forth uh, ordinances this evening, the Economic Community and Development uh, committee and the transient guest tax committee. Both of those committees do a lot of work, very, uh, very important work, very hard, tedious work. And I just want to compliment the committee members and the leadership of those committees for the work they did and bringing forth those ordinances tonight. Thank, thank you. you for the comment. That's, that's well taken. Deputy Mayor. Well, I'll thank, thank you for the comment as well. I wanted to give a shout out to the to the, uh, certainly the committee, but also the staff that really helped the Economic and Community Development Committee. And they're here, uh, Corey Wright, Sasha Stiles, Nikki Lee, and Angela Horn from the council office. That was a lot of work for them too, pre presenting to us and preparing. We had a tight schedule, and so we had to turn things around pretty fast as well with lots of moving parts. And so um, often there's a lot of work going on from the staff as well. And, as she leaves uh, Councilwoman De La Isla because she was the driver in getting that uh, process that we use put together and, and it, it is a tough one. It was very tough to do, but um, we think that with this third year we're, we've tested it out and got it going. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Clear. You know, before I was on the council, I was unaware of some of the exciting things going on in, to, in the city and how many people are, are working together for the city. I went to the Harlem Visioning meeting and was amazed at all the leaders coming together to work on projects for the betterment of Topeka. And I uh, heard about the pedestrian master plan and encourage anyone that has questions about that to go online and look at that. That was really exciting. I attended my first community action board meeting and although I knew about community action, 
didn't know how vested those board members were in that agency and I'm excited to be on that um, and I went to the Oakland wastewater treatment plant where I'd lived my whole life and never I smelled it but I never really went down there and it was exciting to see the projects coming up and how dedicated they are to their jobs in the community so it's really exciting to see uh, um, the good things in Topeka. Good. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. There being no other business before the body, we are adjourned. Good job. It was written. No, it was written on my. It was written on my thing.